Okay, here we go. All right. <laughs> oh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize for the few minutes delay. We were having such a good time with the last show on YouTube. I don't know if any of you saw it, but we had a great show. And we're going to do another one right now. So once again, I am Nicholas Vaselli, the Artistic Director of Theater Breaking Through Barriers. I am coming to you live high atop the Thunderdome in beautiful Midtown Manhattan. And uh, I'd like to welcome you all again to this incredible uh uh, intensive that we have. This is our second Virtual Playmakers Intensive, or VPI 2, Voices from the Great Experiment. I hope you've been watching. This is the fourth night of our intensive. It's just going by way too fast. We're really having, uh, you know, when you have, you know how they always say time flies when you're having fun? Um, when you are working with such great artists, um, it, it really is pretty amazing when, um, when you have an opportunity to, to, to work together. I'm kind of overjoyed by it. So um, I don't want to waste a whole lot of time because we have an incredible show tonight. And um, I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. Uh, tonight's play um, uh, is written by a really wonderful playwright. Her name is Tatiana Rivera. Tatiana Rivera has worked with us in the past, and she's really quite incredible. Um, and she, she came up with another great show. So we're going to share that with you right now. It is directed by... Uh, one of my favorite people in the world and a, a, a legend, uh, Everett Quinton, is directing this tonight. Uh, it, we have an incredible ensemble of actors, uh, Veronica, Veronica Cruz, Patrick uh, J. O'Hare, Christopher Ambrosiano, and Estrella Temez, Estrella Temez. And so, all right, without further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy this wonderful new place, new piece by Tatiana G. Rivera. Hey ho! Hi, Queen! Well, at the risk of asking the dumb question... How am I doing? How are you doing? Oh, I'm sorry. It just... It feels like it took forever and a day to get to this point, to get to this week, and now it's put on hold yet again. Yeah, but you can't blame yourself. This was literally out of your control. I'm not blaming myself, but let's be honest. I wasn't giddy and flitting about, ready to get married. The countdown was less Dick Clark's rockin' New Year's Eve and more like, you've got five minutes left on your AP exam, except I only answered four questions. Right. Brady was the one who wanted the whole to do. He proposed and I was ready to hop on the subway straight to City Hall. I know I love that man. I know that he is the one I am ready to hunker down with and do all the boring married things. Especially since you are already doing the boring married things solo. Exactly, but it feels like he's listening less and less to what I want and convincing me more and more to do what he wants. He had to have the big blowout and the bachelor party. He had to have the steak and the lobster. He had to have his brothers and his cousins and relatives from who the fuck knows where all in attendance. And someone please tell me how, how does one man have seven grandparents? Yeah, I have no idea how that works. And now I have all this shit in my house like that I have to climb over all day, every fucking day. Like, who the fuck thought it would be a good idea to handle the decorations for their own wedding? Um, well... Shut it. I've already yelled at me. Do not make me yell at you too. Sorry. And all the while I just keep thinking, we could already be married. We could have had this shit over and done with. We could be happy as two little married clams plowing through a pandemic together. Instead, it's drinking every night and whining about the awesome party he missed out on. Yeah, well, I'd be pissed too. I guess it's a pretty privileged position to be whining about a postponed wedding when when there are people getting sick and dying? 
when there are people getting sick and dying? Then it's probably not the best time to tell you. I think I have it. Excuse me? One of the guys from my DC getaway last weekend went to the doctor with all the symptoms. When did he go? Two days ago. And how do you feel? I can't really take deep breaths, but other than that, I feel totally fine. How long have you been feeling this way? Just a day or two. Caleb, why didn't you tell me? Please, it's not even confirmed. It's probably just the flu. You better keep me goddamn updated. I swear to God, Caleb, I'll kill you myself. Okay, mother. <laughs> Speaking of, that was buzzing. Yeah. I'll text you later. Love you. Love you. Hey, Tots. Hi, I, um. Oh God, what's wrong? My grandma's sick. Sick, what? She caught it. She caught, oh God, how? A nurse brought it into the home. Jesus Christ. Three residents were infected and isolated. She was the first. Tots, I'm so sorry. They have her on a preventative ventilator. She keeps trying to take it out. Are they explaining anything to her? She doesn't understand what's wrong. She doesn't know why she can't have any visitors. She doesn't know why she can't leave the room. Oh, God. And her dementia, is it getting worse? It's been in a pretty steep decline the last six months. Oh, wow. You didn't tell me any of that. I didn't know how. I'm sorry. You keep saying that. Sorry. Oh, God. Sorry. I'm not sure what else to say. I mean, I'd rather just ply you with liquor at the bar, but that's not exactly possible because, well. Right. Tell me what I can do. I don't know. Welfare check me. I can do that. Not a problem. Thanks. I just probably shouldn't be alone if shit completely goes down. Alone? You live with someone. Correct. Okay. Okay. You want to stay on? No. Oh. I, I, I'm fine. You sure? I can stay on for however long. Maybe uh, just a few more minutes. Okay, I can do that. I love you. I love you too. Hi, Tats. Hi. Where are you? At the office. Why? I couldn't be in that apartment anymore. Isn't your office closed? Yep. Is he still being a dick? It's, his job is just really stressful. Uh, hi, your life is really stressful. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. People keep saying that. Okay, uh, what are you up to at the office? 
Oh, just the usual. Watering the plants. Talking to the plants. <laughs> Writing an obituary. Writing a... Oh no, you're not. Sure am. So I guess this means... Yeah, yeah, she's gone. When did it happen? Last night. But she just got sick last week. Guess the virus wanted to make quick work of her. I don't know what to say. Just tell me what to write. Why are you the one doing this? Because no one else wants to. Are you kidding? No. I think it's just my grandpa all over again. What do you mean? Like, when he died, no one else wanted to. No one else could write it. It's not fair. I guess it makes sense. There's really no one in your family who can write it. As if any of them could be trusted. Well, might as well put the writing degree to good use. Yeah, I just didn't think it would have to be through the devastation of all of this. No challenge is supposed to be easy. Ladies and gentlemen, the theme of everything. <laughs> well, what have you got so far? Um, it is with great sadness that we announce the death of our matriarch, Magdalena Rivera. That's a good start. It's due in a week. You always write best under pressure. Yeah, when I had a grade on the line. What's blocking the flow? I don't know. Okay, how can I help? No, that's it. I don't know. I don't know anything about her. I know her recipes and her favorite color and the fact that she had to be fed snacks all day long. <laughs> like grandmother, like granddaughter. <laughs> My whole life. I never asked her any questions. I never researched where she was from, never knew what she was passionate about. I was the blessed grandchild who never needed to be anything more than that. So I never bothered to amount to anything more than that. How selfish. Oh, but that's most grandchildren. Yeah, but I don't want to be like every other asshole. Then why don't you start asking the questions now? It feels too little too late. You know what I mean? But it's not. I wouldn't even know where to start or who to ask. What's that buzzing? My mom is calling. Well, there's your start. Yeah, right. I'll, I'll call you later. Love you. I love you too. Jesus, Caleb, you look terrible. Oh, you're not gonna like how I sound either. <laughs> what happened to your voice? I can't catch my breath. Did you see a doctor? Yeah, but he told me not to come back unless the symptoms get worse. Oh, they don't look <laughs> particularly good now. Apparently, I'm best case scenario. Jesus. Yeah. And, and there's nothing they can do? They can't do anything until they know how bad things are going to get. They have to save the resources for people who really need them. I just, I can't believe they won't help you. It is what it is. I hate seeing you so sick. I hate feeling so sick. <laughs> right. So what's the update on your grandma? Uh, she's stable. Cut. Okay, she's... You know. I know. Oh, fucking Patrick. You knew you didn't want to tell me. I didn't want anyone to tell you. Why? 
because the last thing you need to hear is that someone died from the disease you caught. But the deaths are all over the news. I'm hearing about them anyway. But I don't want to burden you with one more. Your pain is not a burden. My pain isn't relevant right now. It is to me. God, how is it that you can make room for my emotional shit right now and Brady can't be bothered? What do you mean? It's whatever, it's nothing. Tell me. I just, I can't complain about my problems without him also complaining about his. I get the whole tit for tat thing, but sometimes one person needs the spotlight for the night and it always seems to fall on him. What the fuck is wrong with that guy? Who knows, whatever. It's been two weeks now. Has anything about you gotten better? I can smell a bit better now. That's good, right? Not when you haven't done laundry in as much time. Don't you? I think we need all the humor and positivity we can get right now. I guess. I'm guessing you can't fly out for a funeral. It's not smart for anyone to fly out. No point in the rest of the family risking it. We can always hold a memorial later. That's probably for the best. Not the best for closure, but it is what it is. Yeah, sure is. <laughs> you sound really bad. I probably shouldn't be talking so much. Okay, I I'll let you go. I didn't say we had to stop. Okay. I love you. I love you too. Get the fuck out! What? Can you leave, please? Jesus, that's loud. Sorry. Can you go in the other room now? What the hell is going on? He's relocating. And being such a pain in the ass about it. Brady? Yeah. Everything is, do you know how much shit they're giving me at work? And I can do all of this with my eyes closed and they're mad about me for missing a meeting? But why is he missing meetings? Because he sleeps all day from being up all night doing blow. I thought that wasn't supposed to be a problem anymore. So did I. Aren't you the one going through shit right now? Shouldn't you be up all night doing blow? I certainly thought so. Not that I'm condoning you go on a bender. Right. I mean, if you needed one, now would be a really good time. Right. But please, don't go on one. Patrick, I'm fine. No benders are currently on the schedule. <laughs> okay, good. Has he done anything for you since your grandma died? He drank the bottle of tequila you sent. The sympathy tequila? I bought that for you to go on your non-bender. Yep. Jesus, he's an asshole. I've been getting that vibe. I'll send you another one tonight, but you better fucking hide it. You finished the obit yet? No, I have a phone call with my grandmother's sister in an hour. Get some background for inspiration. I am desperately trying to make it sound, I don't know, not dull. I hardly think it would sound dull. She was a wife and a mom. That's it. You'll get there, Todd. I know you'll write some kick-ass life telling story about how an incredible woman she was. I just feel so guilty because it's all glaringly apparent that I loved my grandfather more. 
You know that's not true. It feels that way. I know more about him in his life than I ever bothered to learn about her. It's human nature to bond with some family members more than others. Some kids are closer with one parent or a sibling. You probably just had more in common with your grandpa. Yeah, except now that I feel like an asshole because of it. But nobody thinks that about you. I'm pretty sure my mom does. She hasn't said it directly, but I can feel the bitterness. How is she holding up? It's weird to hear her sound so low. I bet. It's hard to lose your mom. Or any parent. And it's not even just how do you parent a parent when their parent has died. It's how do you parent a parent when their parent has died during a global pandemic and going to see her will probably result in your parent catching it and dying as well. That's... Yeah, that's shitty. You sound overwhelmed. I am pretty fucking overwhelmed. I'm sorry. <sighs> apologize when there's something to apologize for. Sorry. God, I'm sorry. <laughs> I gotta go. I should prep for the phone call. Sound like a give a shit, even though I waited until after her life was done to learn about it. Hey, stop being so hard on yourself. Love you. Love you. Oh my God, what's wrong? She was kidnapped. What? Who? My grandmother. Wait. Someone stole her body? Oh, when she was young, she was kidnapped. What are you talking about? I was talking to my grandmother's sister to get details about her life. And apparently, my grandfather saw her in Mexico, decided that was his wife of choice, and snatched her up to America and made her his bride. Uh, wow. Yeah. That's, um... I, nothing. I have nothing. I am without speech. All this time, I thought they were this cute, happy couple, making a bunch of babies, living the American dream. I spent my life revering that man, loving him, honoring him by getting educated and getting a good job and not getting pregnant. You wanted to make him proud. There's nothing wrong with that. Yes. Let's make the kidnapper happy with the results of his and his prisoner's progeny. Oh, I just can't believe no one knew. Like, she lived an entire lifetime and you're just hearing about it now? I am replaying every memory I have stored to see if there was any indication. No, don't torture yourself. There's no way you could have known. And there's nothing you could have done, even if you did. You know what Brady said when I told him? God, what? That's wild. And then he proceeded to pour himself a drink and complain about his boss. He poured himself a drink? Uh-huh. Fucking asshole. I am sitting there telling this man I love that my whole life, the singular couple's goal in my family is a complete sham. And all he can do is complain about his own mundane bullshit. Read the room, asshat! He just... He's a dick. He's a dick. So, what does this mean for the obituary? I honestly don't know. I can't put this shit in there, but how do I talk about how wonderful her life was when she didn't even have a choice in it? I don't know. I mean, there, there has to be something that you can piece together. I'm sure there's something. My grandfather was my world. He was my father, my best friend. He gave me everything. It still have been a good man. But he, could a kidnapper be a, a good man? I think you're, 
you're going to have to try and find the gray area here. This can't just be black and white. She was so lost when he died. I thought it was so romantic. I never imagined it could be Stockholm Syndrome. Do you think she could have gone with him willingly? Do you think, I don't know, maybe, maybe he gave her the choice and that she left with him and her family only thought it was a kidnapping? I um, don't know. Maybe they ran off together. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just trying to devil's advocate, whatever. I know. And I love you for it. <laughs> so what do you need to get this thing written and done? A tranquilizer. Or an entire family history rewrite. How about some takeout? You want a burrito with a side of Chinese food? Brady was hungry and asked if I could start cooking dinner early. Of course he did. Of course he did. Well, tomorrow's dinner is on me. The last thing you should have to do is cater to someone else. Speaking of, I gotta go check on the food. I'll call you later, okay? Okay, I love you. Love you too. Hello? Hey, uh, give me a sec. I gotta put some pants on. Every the nudist. It cuts down on laundry. Remind me never to sit on your couch again. <laughs> okay, I'm decent. Oh, did you send it in? Yeah. How do you feel? Oh, I felt like a liar at first, but then I had a good talk with my mom and she helped me make the best out of my grandma's story. How do you mean? Did you tell her about the kidnapping? Yeah. Did she freak out? Oh my God, what did she say? She already knew. What? Apparently, my grandmother told my mom about it years ago. It was right after my grandfather had some crazy surgery. What did she say? She said that my grandmother didn't have a lot of options where she was from. She was basically going to be sold to the highest bidder because she was so beautiful. And getting taken away by my grandfather actually afforded her the best shot at a good life that she could get. Wow, that's, wow. He took her to America, where he worked his ass off to support them. She got to run her home on her own terms, albeit very limited terms. But that was better than her wasting away on some farm back home. He loved her. He loved his children, and, and he gave her a shot of having a real legacy. It's kind of beautiful in its own sad way. Well, when you don't have many options. And she got to break the cycle. Have kids who could make their own choices. Pick who they love, choose what they do. Makes me think a lot about my own legacy. I can imagine. What do I want my life to be? Where do I want to go? Am I honoring her sacrifice or am I settling for the, what's there just because it's there. You're talking about Brady? I'm talking about everything. My job, my art, my love life. What do you think you're gonna do? I think I know what I should do. Hots, if you're thinking what I think you're thinking, then I bet you're back 100%. Spiritually, physically, fuck the virus. I guess it's a good thing I didn't get my way after all. City Hall? Yeah. His selfishness finally pays off. It finally does. I, I gotta head out and gotta st start setting things in motion. Okay. Love you.
proud of you. You ready, bitch? Get excited. <laughs> not even 100%. Do not get all pumped up. Are you kidding? This has been my wet dream for years. Okay, well, let's revisit that sentiment a month into our cohabitation. Whatever, bitch. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. I know, me either. Seeing your human form will be everything. There's so many shows to catch you up on. Hey, Lib, I have been quarantining for two weeks. All I've done is watch shows. Whatever. I also already have dinner planned for tomorrow night. Once Megan and Patrick get all your shit into storage, you'll come here for a nice, warm, home-cooked meal. Home-cooked? Home-ordered. It's my specialty. I would appreciate nothing more. You doing okay? Considering? Considering. It's all one big goddamn mess, but <laughs> it's my mess and I'm ready to clean it up. And for however long that takes, you are more than welcome to stay here. Even if it takes three months? Even if it takes six months? Even if it takes a year? Even if it takes six months? Bitch! <laughs> you stay here for whatever length of time you want. I'm just so happy you're getting a fresh start. No better time than now. Right. I have to run to the store. Text me if you need me to pick you anything up. I'm all set. All set. Thank you. Okay. Love you. See you tomorrow. Love you too. It is with great sadness that we announce the death of our matriarch, Madalena Rivera. Born in 1934, Madalena's life was defined by the lives that she touched. From her humble beginnings as a child in Mexico and teen wife in Texas, she spent most of her life in California and Arizona, joyfully keeping home for her six children and husband. As a wife and mother, she was quick with a meal or bandage, usually accompanied by a much needed scolding. As a grandmother, she was quick with a smile or a laugh, a guaranteed follow-up to one of her cherished hugs. Her passion for family was second to none and her penchant for finding friendship in any social situation continues in the legacy of her children and their children. Magdalena spent her years feeding and caring for anyone who needed love and taught her children the strength needed to stand up for what was right instead of what was easy and to never settle for the very best the world had to offer. She shouldered countless burdens and comforted many in despair understanding that putting light out into the world meant bringing light back into her community and family. There was no greater example of selflessness. Madalena joins her husband after almost eight long years apart and while a devastating loss to her family and the world, it is quite honestly the greatest homecoming for her heart.
Wow. I that just again, that just gets me. It's such a great, such a great piece. Oh, you guys, you're amazing. You're amazing. Can everyone come back on, please? Come on. All right, Christopher Brosiano. Oh my goodness, you guys, you guys are amazing. This, uh, there, that Tatiana G. Rivera, folks. The author, author. Oh, such an amazing, amazing. It's, again, I love this play because I love this piece because of the of it 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 goes through this big arc, you know, and and it just um, it encompasses so much. It just it encompasses so much of what we're all going through right now. Um, and while I know that it was it's personal, it's very personal material. Uh, it's it's relatable on it's relatable to us on 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 every level i think um thank you so much for writing this you know that tatiana you're you're amazing um you know she, tatiana is an incredible um artist she she's very much uh like the character that she wrote she's she's does like 25 million things she multitasks like crazy and she just happens to be really good at all of them so uh i'm just so excited that um the last time you wrote for us was i think about two what two almost two years ago a little over two years ago so thank you thank you so much for coming back and bringing this along it's such a great piece and there's again it's very rich um I, I want to I want to just ask a few little things before we we, we uh, knock off this evening. Uh, I want to I want to talk to our actors. I want to talk to our company. Um, you know, it's funny uh, when we started doing this virtual intensive. Uh, I, I had no idea how this was going to come off. We're so used to performing live. We're so used to having bodies in the room that the energy gets exchanged and and um, you know it, there's that's a whole process and it's it's like it's to an actor it's church you know you're in a theater that's your church um doing it here i was always thinking we're not going to be able to accomplish that but i'm curious to sort of get some thoughts from you how do you do, do you feel that we were able to capture like were you able to get the energy from your you know, um from your your fellow actors in this in this um process can you can you all, um, I'm, Christopher? You start. You start with, uh, with that one. Uh, it's funny because that was sort of my concern coming into this. I was like, oh, virtually, like over Zoom, how is this going to work? How how are we supp supposed to connect with one another? But uh, it, it's been really incredible and actually possible. It was uh, really effective and really easy. I think it it helps that all these guys are amazing actors. So uh, they, they can help, but bring themselves to it and, and give you the ability to connect with them. But um, yeah, I was, I was genuinely surprised at how well I still felt connected both to the text and to the other performers while still performing on Zoom. It's pretty cool. Yeah, Th yeah, I, th I agree, I agree. Um, how, how do you, I mean, how do you feel? Is this your first experience doing this, Estrella? Like doing a, a play on Zoom? Yeah, it is. I've 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 been doing um, on-camera classes for, well, since probably May. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that helped with the technical part of it, but that was me. It's more, more like you're taping yourself to have clips or, you know, I wrote a series for Zoom too, but it's different when you're live. And I was kind of concerned about that too. And I was like, oh my gosh, and not even just about connecting with the other people, but being having the energy up for myself because you don't you're sitting in a chair you're behind a desk um but i think that this is our new reality and i feel like um the the pandemic has forced us to seek connections in other ways like i'm a very social person i love being around people i love being on stage i love interactions um but also we've been in quarantine for so long i think that we're so desperate to connect to each other and as actors, as human beings. Um, so it's it's really surprising how easily it was to feel um, 
Todd's energy and just when I was watching the other scenes to see that everyone is just trying to connect. Mm -hmm. um, and we were doing that in rehearsals. Like, I think we were just trying to figure out how to connect with each other. And I, I feel like we, we did it. Yeah, I'm telling you, I, I, I think it's incredible. Patrick, do you have any any thoughts or ideas on it? Was, no, it, it did have that, like, I was wondering if it would have that feel of, like, opening night, like, when you go on. And it did have that kind of, like, you got the, 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 the butterflies and, like, all that because you're waiting to go on. You know, you're even, like, before the before the performance, we're in a breakout room and we're talking, we're like, okay, we're going to do it. We're going to go on, you know. So it, it did kind of build that energy up. It was, it was exciting. It was exciting. Very exciting. Yeah. It really is, and it, in so many ways, it is like it is. It's live. It's live. Like you know, live theater. Yeah. All right. My I, I screwed up the sound cue. I apologize. I apologize. You know, Everett. Thank you for chiming in with the buzzing. It was. It was just. It was a misfire. I I hit the the, the button and it didn't go off. And I'm like, Shh. So we did one show where the guy yeah. lost his uh, Wi-Fi. And oh, he couldn't cool. make the entrance, so I jumped in with the script and did the lines. And then wow. he came back for the next scene. It's you just got it is live. It's that it has that live aspect, which is like Patrick said. I remember the first time I acted on this. It was like, you, you know, when you're ready to go on, you think, well, why don't why didn't I pick something else to do that yeah. doesn't make you want to <laughs> throw up before you go on? And I, then. <laughs> I have one question I have to ask you, Everett, but I just wanted to, I wanted to just to, to uh, throw this at Veronica for a second. Yes. Because Veronica, you, I mean, for this piece, you, you are, you carry the lion's shirt. You're in every scene. Uh, it's, it's, it's so much. It really is. It's, it's you know, thank you. For diva, diva. Yeah. I mean, uh, everything is sort of built on that and every, uh, you know, every passage, every sequence that we go through, you're, you know, you're in different, a different place in a different time. And how was that? What, what is, what was that like to create on, on this? Well, I, I think like the first couple of rehearsals, I was very stressed out because <laughs> I wanted to make sure the time and on the props and costumes and also the different, the shift of all the different things that she's dealing with all at the same time. It's so, it's, it was hard, but I feel like I loved working with everybody because I really was able to connect, I felt, with, with every person individually, very different. And no, now today I'm starting to, the beginning of seeing, oh, I could do this, I could do that, oh, it's, you know how it goes. Yeah. But, um, yeah. but it was, every day got better and better. And you, you're like, you can do this on Zoom, you can do this, you can connect with people. Yeah. And, uh, thank you so much, Tatiana, for writing this beautiful play and for sharing it with us. Because uh, I know it's it's you and it's your it's personal. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, I th you know, we have I get into a discussion with that all the time because I think everything that a writer writes is personal at some point in their life. It's usually yeah. you know, and then uh, then ultimately you know you might be able to look at it objectively when it's done as like oh yeah that's something that happened or whatever, but. It's still, I mean, it's, it's, it's such an important, you know, it, when it starts on a personal level, it becomes so relatable to everyone. And the fact that you are in the room uh, just makes it, it, it just brings it all in. It, it's, it, it just tied it all up and, and, and helped everybody in such a huge way. Um, Everett, I really, what I wanted to talk to you about uh, was when we did our first intensive, you were talking about how much you loved Zoom. And I was like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. Um, you've done, uh, I, when I, when I started this intensive, I thought I wanted to create work that was, um, written for this platform because I've seen a lot of live plays and I just don't know if they can have the same, um, intensity. I mean, I think they can, but you have to sometimes be very creative about how you do it, especially because if a play was written to be performed on a stage, a live performance where the actors are supposed to be in the same space. And as an audience, you come into a space, must suspend your disbelief to say, okay, um, this is a living room that I'm watching, or this is a, some odd planet or whatever. Um, the, the energy is still in the room. And, um, and then, uh, you know, by doing those types of plays on this, you have to suspend your disbelief a bit further by saying, okay, these two people who are supposed to be in the same room talking to each other are, on, are two little blocks on a screen. And, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. 
how do you feel about that? Do you have any thoughts on like a, a, a live play versus uh, a work like, for example, this one, which was written for this platform? Well, like, like anything, we all we have to adjust to the, our reality. And in the reality now, it's unprecedented time. And it, But I love Zoom. I, like I said in the beginning, it, it's got so many facets. Yeah. We're, at some points, we're puppets, where we exist just to be puppets. At, at other points, we're dramatic actors. We, well, we're always the, that, but mm -hmm. the, it's like live television. It has that lie, like Patrick said, you know, I remember when I first did it, I was like, oh shit, I got, felt those butterflies and the nerves. That's, that's what propels you because no actor wants to fall flat. Mm -hmm. you no, know, it wants to, once it's places that an actor becomes a, another creature. We yeah. become, we are, and I was saying in the thing, God chose us to be actors. It's not a mistake that no. we do, that we're, we're not, everyone, if everyone thinks they can do it. And they can't. And the same as I can't, well, I could bake bread. I could be a baker, but I couldn't be. A, I, there are lots of things I couldn't be, but it's, it's, there are, it, it's multifaceted. And it, uh, but it's like live television too. So imagine when people were doing, I've been watching these old movies and reading Wikipedia about these old stars mm -hmm. and how they all went in. The, there was a time in the 50s where all the television was live. Oh and yeah, all went into it, and I I saw uh, had a gabbler with um, Ingrid Bergman mm -hmm. oh, from 50th wow. Television, and she and at one point she went up in a lines and and I go wow, and she got it back just the way you do, and so it I I don't see I think this may be the way of the future. I don't know. I certainly don't think it when the pandemic ends that Zoom will end. Absolutely not that Zoom theater will end. And people are, like this play itself did not lend, it's not very prop heavy. So it doesn't lend itself to, but I did, uh, Charles, we did the ring off for Blungeet and I had a fire breathing dragon. And at one point I had the fire breathing dragon breathe the fire and then Siegfried had made his own fire and his fire came into the screen. And so it, it lends it, and that's the puppetry aspect of it. I, we propped that whole show with cardboard. It's incredible. I, we That's all I made swords out of cardboard, and I it was just that 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 children's theater aspect of it. It, it, it it's rich. It's, it's ripe for the plucking. It's ripe for the mining. I think. I have to ask you this, and again, please forgive me, but what do you think Charles Charles Ludlum would think of this of this medium? Oh, he I he, the man that man is, is was way smart. I so know. he would have think. Although I, I don't know. Can you flash? Well, that's where he made Patrick do his sexy underwear thing. In this, that was for Charles. <laughs> so it's 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 um, it the, the the possibilities are limitless. And mm -hmm. if you um come to this, like are, they're all virgins. I worked with all virgins today. I know, I know. But I was a virgin when we did the first intensive. It was mm -hmm. my first time doing zoom so it would but it is you're at we're actors we're not going to fall flat no no matter what and it's no. it so it's mm -hmm. we learn you support each other you carry each other it's it's, it's exactly. it really is collaborative directing second. it is the same thing it, it, it it's like pick up your cues back the cues back everything you say in a live thing you would say here you would say on live television it mm -hmm. it, it is live it's just but, and the audiences love it too. The audiences, um, uh, the audiences appreciate it. You're yeah. Talking, being in an audience, like today I was having a ball. I was like, so glad I didn't have to act in it. And I was like, oh, thank God I can just sit and watch. And I was having a ball and everyone was uh, doing fabulous things. And when, you know, when you're the director, you want it all. And then people, the great thing about actors is they astound you. Mm -hmm. Cause okay. they come up with something you didn't even like, I, I hate to say what my favorite moment is. Can I say what my favorite moment is? And everyone will love me, but it was Estrella when you're drinking from the cup and she, and when, <laughs> <laughs> cracked, cracked when she says, oh, and she was a this and that and this, and it's like, is that all? I was glad I was muted because I cracked up. Oh. Was, so that, oh man, 
So that's what I mean. You get astounded by what actors do, and it's yeah. Well, and you you gave us um, so much room to just play, and I I really appreciate that. I love directors like you um, who just let us play and and imagine and try different things. And if it doesn't work, okay, let's try something else. I I just you were so supportive, and I'm so grateful I got to work with all of you. No, me too. Me too. Uh, it, it is it is such an honor. And yes, Everett, I absolutely agree. This is not going anywhere. I think, I, all right, it is not, it, it can't really, re it can't replace what we do live. It never will. That's a whole other experience. But this is something great. And it a lot, uh, the fact that everyone is in a different place right now, in different parts of the country, we're doing a collaboration with, with uh, Japan right now. That's, again, on the other side of the world and 13 hours ahead of us. And we're still working together. Come on, you can't beat that, you know? I'm I hoping- think I, I like it better. I, you don't have to take the train home. I had gonna get off here and walk the dog. I know, I know. <laughs> it's great. It, 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 makes it, it makes it wonderful and it makes it accessible. And when you are a company that works with uh, uh, the disabled actors, performers with disabilities, um, you know, what I mentioned in the last intensive is most of the time you see us from the shoulders up. You don't see disability, I mean, mm -hmm. Uh, not that I want to, not that we ever want to hide disability. I mean, it, at all, that's not the point. The point is we want, we're artists and we want to draw our audience in. And so, you know, disability should matter as much as we want it to matter, not as much as, you know, uh, people will perceive it. Um, so uh, again, this is just a great, uh, a great tool, a great opportunity, and we have great potential with it. And I'm so thankful to you guys. You are all amazing. Uh, thank you so much for for um, elevating our work, for being a part of this. And um, we're going to do another intensive in October. So expect an invitation, all of you. Um, so, all right. I just want to thank you again. Um, if you liked what you saw tonight, and I'm, I hope you did, um, please uh, like us on Facebook or go to YouTube and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Tell your friends. Tell your families. Tell everybody. <laughs> Get the word out there. That's what we really need. Um, and if you really want to know more about us, go to our website, tbtv.org, tbtv.org. And uh, you can find out all about our company, our history. There's a, a, a great archive page there. We have a lot of um, our past intensive archive there. Um, and uh, if you really love us, at the very top of the homepage, there's a little, a button, little yellow button that says donate. Click on that. And we'd be happy to take uh, that expression of your love. Um, so tomorrow night, fri tomorrow's Friday night already. My God, it's going so fast. We have a great Friday night feature, great Friday night show. Um, it's, uh, it's a piece by, again, an incredible playwright that, that uh, she is working with us for the first time. Her name is Monet Marshall. And Monet wrote this great, great piece called Three Gods on a Zoom. Uh, it is, uh, let me get all this straight. Uh, Robin Carmen Marshall is directing, and uh, it features three wonderful performers, Kiana Alexander, Kalila Black, and Adreen Smith. So please tune in, 7.30 YouTube, 8.15 Facebook. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be safe, mask up, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.